Okay, Rabbi, we do have another caller. Uh, so let's take this call. Caller, thank you for uh, for tuning in. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hey, my name is Gunther. Uh, I'm calling from California. Hi, Gunther. I'm I'm actually a Muslim, okay. and uh, I'm looking. I've been searching for like doctrines everywhere. Sure. Just trying to find something that's capable of reforming Islam. Okay. And um, I was just going to ask: Is it possible to be a Noahide and a Muslim at the same time? Because we don't have a theological equivalent of the Ten Commandments, right? We, it just seems like a thing that would be a very good filter. So is it possible That's to be a question. Muslim Thanks. and a Noahide at the same time? That is a really excellent question. Okay, thank you for your call. Thanks. If you want to, we can just disconnect and you can just listen in for the answer, okay? Okay. Thank okay, you. perfect. Thank you. That's a really great question. So for those who are not familiar with the word Noahide, that means could somebody be a Muslim and also a Noahide means that um, someone is a, a righteous Gentile. Uh, in Christianity, for example, I don't care, unless you're some, you know, Episcopalian, left-wing, liberal, whatever, but in all Christian literature, if you don't believe in the tenets of Christianity, you're going to burn hell forever. There's, you can't, you can't be saved without being a Christian. Okay? It's very clear. But in Judaism, you don't have to convert to Judaism to be right by God. A person has to live by the Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noach, which means the seven Noachide laws. And they're not, contrary to what most people think, they're not individual laws, but they are each, is a, there are seven categories of laws. Um, and very important, central is to worship one God and no other. That's critical um, to, um, to be honest in business and not steal. And the answer to the question is that Islam is in a completely unique status in Judaism in that it is regarded, highly regarded, as a, a pure monotheism. That, that Muslims worship one God only. Every Muslim says it every day. You know, la ilaha, they say every day, there is no God but Allah, every day. And, 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 and in fact, in the Quran, uh, this is over and over again repeated, that there is no God but God. In fact, that's why Muslims are so sensitive about uh, making like pictures of Muhammad, uh, even though the crazies, you know, we all have crazies, so the crazies go and, you know, do all kinds of crazy things, but the reason is, is that they're very, they don't want that people should ever deify or think that Muhammad is anything more than a prophet or messenger of God, that he, no one would ever think that he was actually a, a deity. This is, and incidentally, there were Muslims who were heretical that actually started to believe that Muhammad was divine in some way. And they were, they were expelled as heretics completely. There was even some um, Shia Muslims that held that. I mean, there's a very tiny groups, tiny breakaway groups. I mean, we all have them. Uh, you know, that uh, like Shia Muslims who believe that Ali was was divine, they would, you know, throw it out on their head. So the key point is that Muslims are B'nai Noach, which means that they worship one true God. They worship one God. And I'm going to say this to my Muslim friends. When Christians say to you or say that, Christians do that. They say that Muslims worship a moon god and all kinds of crazy things. They're all liars and they're nonsense. And the Christians who say this, you're making yourself look like idiots in front of these Muslims. I'm going to say to, to the Christians who attack Muslims, you should really search yourself because a Jew is not allowed to even walk into a church. In Jewish law, I cannot walk into a church. I'm not even allowed to step in. I can't use the bathroom in it. I cannot walk into the building because they, unless they don't worship the Trinity, but because they worship a man as God, so it's complete idolatry. No Jew is allowed to walk into a church in Jewish law. 
But a Jew can go into a mosque. He can, if he wants to, he can pray his afternoon prayers. We pray three times a day. We could pray more, but we have three times a day. If I want to say my mincha prayer, the afternoon prayer, if I want to say shachras, I can ask my Muslim friends. I live in the largest Muslim country in the world. I have many, many friends here who are Muslim leaders, and really, I can ask them, may I use your mosque because I want to pray shachras, my morning prayer? Not a problem at all, because they worship one true God. So it's just very important that a person should worship one God and one God alone. The Christians who make up all kinds of nonsense about Islam are really making fools out of themselves completely. Um, and, uh, and in Jewish law, Muslims have the status of, of B'nai Noach, which means they worship one God. So the answer is absolutely. You just worship one God and one God only. And that's all. It, it, this does not mean instantly that Judaism and Islam are identical. That's not the case. But they worship one God. And you'll say, what about they, they believe that Jesus was a prophet? This is not an issue. Because what Islam has done, really, is to strip away all the, basically, the problems of Christianity. So, uh, you know, we don't, Jews don't, uh, don't, you know, we don't follow Jesus, we don't, you know, we don't follow Jesus as a prophet. So you have to understand that the, the Jews of Christianity and the Jews of Islam are completely different. And people think, like, they're not, they're, they're completely different. It's only superficially that they're similar, in that Muslims completely reject the notion that Jesus was divine in any way. To them, that's complete idolatry. They despise it. And it, it moreover, the, the notion that Jesus died for sins, to Muslims, that's a, an, an abomination. So the notion that you should worship Jesus, that's complete idolatry to a Muslim. The notion that J Jesus died, they don't believe he died. The, um, the Quran says that it, it seemed like, there's a lot of discussion on this, but the Quran is very clear. He did not die. He was, he ascended. In Islamic um, eschatology, they believe that he's going to return and then uh, 40 years as the Messiah. They do believe that. And then he's going to die. And then he's going to die. He's not going to live forever. So what Islam has done is essentially taken out all the filth of Christianity from you know, the Jesus part. So if a Christian, if, if Muslims believe that Jesus was a messenger, but he didn't come to undo anything, so that's, you know, that's, that's, not, a, that's not an issue. If they believe that, which they do, that Jesus was born to a virgin Mary, Miriam. In fact, in the Quran, um, Jesus is, is referred to as Jesus, the son of Miriam, constantly. There's a whole surah in the Quran just dedicated to, to Mary. And in fact, Mary by far is the most... Um, elevated and extolled woman in the Quran, by far. But the fact that they believe Jesus was born to a virgin, so they believe that she never went to bed with anyone. That's not relevant to us. It's not relevant if someone did go to bed. The key is that they do not believe that, that Jesus changed the Torah. So therefore, that's completely, it's, it's, a, it's completely irrelevant. There's one other point I have to make. And that's um, the Christian Bible, the, the Christian scriptures, change the, the Jewish Bible, change the text in order to make our Hebrew scriptures look appear Christological. Okay? They do this constantly. Okay? So texts are changed. This is especially true in the book of Matthew. Paul does this up and down. I mean, it's Paul's like, wild all over the place on this. So it's very important that Muslims do not believe that the Christian Bible is the Word of God. They believe there is a gospel that Jesus received, and today's Christian Bible is corrupt completely. Um, they believe there are some truths in the Christian Bible if they conform to the Quran, but the rest of it, they and they believe that Paul was a complete fraud. Um, so therefore, they don't say, and this is very critical, Islam, the Quran does not do what the church does. They don't say, they because there are many, you know, Arabic and Hebrew are very close. They're both Semitic languages. So the 
Arabs who, or the Muslims who know Hebrew, they know that it doesn't say in Isaiah 7:14 that behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she, they know that it means young woman. And they, this is very important, Muslims will say the reason why we believe that Jesus was born a virgin is because it says in the Quran, not because it says it in the New Testament. You understand? There's a very big difference. So they don't play those games with our Bible. So therefore, um, therefore, Islam is very unique in status to Judaism. It's, uh, it's, um, Judaism has an enormous amount of respect for it. You're watching Let the Quran Speak. Now we answer questions we receive from you, our viewers. If you have a question yourself, please visit our website, www.quranspeaks.com. Okay, Brother Shabir, this is a question from someone who says, I grew up Jewish and have been practicing Islam for a few months, and I find many similarities and very few differences. So can you comment on those similarities and differences? Um, yes, the, these, uh, there, there are many similarities, and this uh, has to do with the fact that uh, we, we share a common uh, religious history in, in terms of the revelation from God through many prophets and uh, important figures throughout time. Uh, we have, for example, in, in the Quran, the story of uh, uh, the creation of Adam and uh, the uh, flood of Noah and mm -hmm. uh, the story of Abraham and his uh, children. Uh, we have the story of Moses who features very prominently in the Quran. Moses in fact is mentioned more than any other prophet in the Quran, much more, many more times than the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is mm -hmm. mentioned uh, in, in the Quran. Uh, and uh, we have uh, many of the prophets uh, spoken about. Uh, we have David who is uh, uh, mentioned in the Bible as a king um, and, and Solomon, another king in the Bible, but they are mentioned as prophets uh, in, in the Quran. Uh, and so the Quran, in fact, enjoins upon Muslims to believe in all of these prophets. And these prophets are held to be very important people in uh, Judaism and, uh, and in the Hebrew Bible, which uh, our Christian friends refer to as the Old Testament. So we have many of the same stories, many of the same important religious figures. What else is in common? Uh, the, the belief uh, system in that uh, uh, the, the Torah insists that there is only one God, the Shema Israel, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, uh, which uh, our, our Jewish friends are required to um, keep always in, in, their, in the forefront of their minds. Uh, uh, this clearly declares that there is only one God. And uh, this is the declaration in the Quran as well. In the second chapter of the Quran, in the 163rd verse, it says, وَإِلَّهُكُمْ إِلَّهُمْ وَاحِدْ لَا إِلَّهَ إِلَّا who ar rahman ar rahim uh, and your your god is only one god there is no god but him the beneficent the merciful one so this seems to parallel the uh, Deuteronomy uh, passage which um, is, is so uh, so important to the the teaching of the old testament mm -hmm. very quickly what is different between Judaism and Islam Mm, the uh, the main difference uh, seems to be that uh, the uh, Muslims and, and Islam ha has accepted uh, Jesus and whom be peace as a, a prophet and God's Messiah and uh, subsequent to him the prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as a prophet and messenger of God uh, whereas uh, Judaism uh, generally uh, does not accept uh, these two figures uh, as uh, teachers from God. Mm -hmm. So are practices different between Jew Jews and Muslims? In fact, many of the practices are remarkably similar, but uh, when it comes to details of the practices, we may find, like the Muslim fast, some details of it are different, the Muslim prayer, some details of it are different. All right, we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you, Brother Shabir. You're welcome.